Recently, I received a request from a client to mount one of my prints without any frame or matting. After just a couple of keyword searches, I was quickly thrown into the confusing but beautiful world of acrylic and metal prints. The difference between these types of prints and their varieties is very subtle and I quickly came to realize that it would be extremely difficult to make a choice between all the options for what best suited my needs. And then I stumbled upon White Wall's product assortment sample set. So in this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the five samples in the set and highlight some of the things that I particularly liked and disliked about them so that hopefully you can make a more informed decision about what style of print will best suit your needs, whether or not you decide to go with Whitewall or another supplier. So let's start by opening the box. Inside, we basically have five 10 by 10 centimeter prints and they are all of different images chosen by Whitewall. Unfortunately, you can't select the image yourself, but it's enough to give you an idea of what your print would render like. Starting out first, we have the photo print under acrylic glass. So the basic concept here is that the picture is printed on traditional photographic paper. In this case, it's the Fuji Crystal DP2, although there's also the option of the Kodak Pro Endura, as well as Ilford Black and White for, of course, black and white photos. It's mounted to a aluminum dye bond backing board, which is essentially two aluminum plates sandwiching a polyethylene core basically a very sturdy and unbendable piece of plastic sandwiched by metal. On the surface in front of the photographic paper, we have two millimeters of acrylic, which is like a plexiglass. What this does is it protects the photo incredibly well from any wear or any moisture while giving it a sense of depth and vibrancy to the colors. The glass allows the light to refract within its surface, creating more luminance than you would traditionally see. The final particularity of this glass is that it is glossy. For this reason, you'll have a bit more vibrancy in the colors, but it also comes at the expense of glare. So I would avoid putting this too close to any windows or uncontrollable light sources. Thing I really like about this is the quality of the color. I think it really pops. I think for most images, it will work incredibly well. I also love the thickness of the acrylic. I think it's a very lovely finished product that could work in most environments where you have not too much light hitting it directly from the side. Next, we have the original photo image under matte acrylic which is very similar to the previous one I just showed, except in this case, the acrylic glass mounted on the front is given a matte finish. The image has a lot more subtlety to it. I find the colors are less pronounced, but they're given more of a glow that in my opinion is a bit more like a painting. The options for the photographic paper in this case are only the Fuji Crystal DP2, as well as the Ilford Black and White. Next, we have the direct print on brushed aluminum. Like with the previous models, we have the aluminum dye bond backing, but instead of using a photographic paper, their printers print directly on the aluminum surface on the front, which is given a brush finish, meaning that there are the appearances of lined ridges and strokes on the aluminum. This gives a very particular effect as you can see. Basically, instead of rendering white, the image lets the aluminum backing show through. In essence, you are incorporating the metal texture into your image. I am not a huge fan of this. I find it kind of tacky, but I'm sure for certain people it could suit a particular image. But I do really feel like it would become dated very quickly. The next mounting option we have is metal print. This is done through a very specific process called dye sublimation. 
If you want more information on the subject, you can do some research online. But the basic principle is that a printer uses a transfer paper to make the first impression of the image. And then this is placed on an aluminum sheet and essentially baked so that the ink or the dye gets transferred on to the piece of aluminum. In this case, you don't have the aluminum dye bond backing, you simply have a one millimeter sheet of aluminum. It produces honestly quite stunning results. The image has depth and it has vibrancy. It is a bit like staring through a portal into another world. The only issue I have with this is that it is quite thin and to me it feels a bit like a street sign. I only wish that they had included an option to have the aluminum dye bond mounted to the back so that you could have at least some sort of thickness to the mount. Although it is pretty sturdy, it will not bend or break. It is also incredibly scratch resistant, so it can be kept outside as well if that's what you need for your image. The final option is a photo print on aluminum backing. This is very similar to our first acrylic options in the sense that it's a photographic paper. Three options, Fuji Crystal DP2, Kodak Pro Endura, or Ilford Black and White, mounted on the aluminum dye bond backing, except in this case, it has no acrylic glass cover on the front. It's much more simplistic look. They do apparently put some sort of protective element on the front, but when you look closely, you can quickly see that the edges do reveal the photographic paper and that it's just more prone to damage. For that reason, although it does look nice and it is a good way to cheaply mount your photos without a frame, I would reserve this only for exhibition or showcasing, not when choosing to sell to a client. In the end, for the needs of my client, I ended up going with the matte acrylic option. I think the product is absolutely beautiful. It renders the colors super subtly in a painterly way. Honestly, I think it looks fantastic and it's definitely something that I'll print on in the future for more of my work. If you found this video helpful in any way, please consider hitting the like or subscribing if you want to follow me on my photographic journey in the future. Also leave any questions that you may have regarding the difference between acrylic and metal prints in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as comprehensively as possible. Thanks for taking the time to watch and I'll see you soon.